Hello everyone, I'm Ken Wong and welcome back to Perspective Plus. And today, it's all about performance when the pressure is on. So every Formula One race is high stakes and high tech where every millisecond matters and every decision counts. And behind many of those decisions is my guest and also my friend today, Chris Roberts. Chris is the director of IT uh, at Formula One and he has spent more than 26 years in the sports, building the system, leading the race operation, and helping shape the tech for one of the world's most exciting sports. So Chris, thanks for joining me uh, here in Budapest. It's a beautiful, beautiful city. Beautiful. Right? So um, I arrived uh, yesterday, and I was able to have the luxury to uh, you know, walk around the city across the bri bridge. Uh, and because there are so many people in the city, uh, waiting for the uh, great event uh, over the weekend, which is our F1 event. Yeah, beautiful buzz to the city as well. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So is it your first time? I believe not, right? How many times have you been in How in many the city? times? I have no idea. Probably about a dozen. It's great to see the city evolve over the last 26 years as well. We've, we've put on a Hungarian race ever since I've been, been with Formula One. Let me switch the gear a little bit, right? I mean, you and I have been knowing each other for, for years, right? And you know I'm a diehard F1 fan. I try to follow every weekend. As a fan, I'm quite interested in um, you running the operation at the back to make it happen. So, you know, what are some of the behind the scenes things that you can share with someone like me who is a fan? It's, it's interesting because obviously everyone, the fans see the drivers, the cars, the teams. Uh, but there is a massive ecosystem that follows and puts together Formula One. So that includes the, the promoters, but also you know, the broadcaster media teams. And then from our perspective, we bring around 150 staff to each, mm. each F1 event. And we support the, the technology that, that underpins the race. So there's a big network that goes in. We generate 650 terabytes of information uh, per Grand Prix and for that we have a huge very complex technical platform that underpins all of that so we've got a, an acquisition center here which is the ETC which you visited uh, uh, previously that puts things like the team radio the, the graphics and the director that then pulls that to create the story that makes that engaging for the fans there is a lot it's like the old iceberg analogy, there is a lot that goes on underneath, underneath. That, that people just don't see, but it's all critical to make the fans engaged with, with the sport. Uh, thank you, Chris. I, I, you mentioned ETC. I think to a lot of the audiences here, they might know what exactly is ETC. Could you elaborate a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So that's our event technical center. So if you look at the feeds, the camera feeds, there's around 26 cameras, but then we have onboard cameras of which there are up to seven per car. And then we have things like the helicam, special cams, uh, microphones around 150 around the track as well to capture the audio, which is where a lot of that excitement comes from. So that's where all of that feeds come in, all the media comes into, all the timing information, telemetry information, everything from around the track. You know, and if you're an F1 fan, 95% of anything you see will have come through the ETC. So we, we have a network that sits down into the garages as well that the teams plug into, mm. but also some of the local broadcasters will take a feed from, from there. Um, and it allows us to be able to then send all of that data back to the UK. Mm. Uh, it's a huge, probably the most complex acquisition production facility you'll find anywhere in the world. Wow, amazing. So you mentioned about the telemetry that, uh, you know, the operation is able to get it from the car, from the sensors, right, uh, around the race course, and all these are real-time data. So can you share a bit about how these real-time data look like, and most importantly is, um, you know, how you decide what matters in the moment based on, you know, the huge amount of data coming into your operation? Yeah, so I mean, that's it's actually 650 terabytes over the race weekend, which is a, a, a vast amount. Um, and then there's a couple of strands to pull on there, Ken. And I, I think it's, it's about turning some of that data or getting that data and then extracting what's the information that we want to share with our, with our fans. What's the narrative that we want to, to share? 
you know, what's the story that's going on behind the data? I guess there's a couple of good examples, and one of those is we have a, a director that puts the program together, but we also have a director that's looking at the story that's unfolding on the track. So th what they're doing is they're looking to see if there's likely to be an overtake in three or four laps time, let's start introducing that into the program so that as a viewer, you are start to see the drama unfold on the track as to what's going to happen. So we build that storyline. There's a timely factor to this. Because we're Formula One, it's a fast sport. Um, the timeliness of getting that data, that information through is key because there are times once, once it's gone, it's gone. Team radio is a really good example. You know, if there's something that happens on a track, one driver cuts up another driver. We want to get that content out whilst we're doing a replay within a timely manner because that's what builds the drama. So there's a real importance to be able to process a lot of that data and present that information to the directors rapidly, which is where technology obviously comes into play because if you're, you're sorting through that amount of data, we need a lot of processing power to sort of bring the narrative to, to the surface. You mentioned about the, the drama and the story while the driver are, you know, racing, you know, 60, 70 laps nonstop. Um, that for me, you know, it's amazing as a fan. And we talk about data, so there's technical part of the dis discussion, there's an operational part of the discussion. Now, I, I, I have a question about how do, you, how do you train your team? How do you run your team to make sure you, know, you have the instinct to interpret the data and act fast based on the data? It's a really good question. Um, a lot of that is about experience. But I guess the, the, the key change that I've certainly seen over the last five years, five, six years maybe, is that the systems, the, the core infrastructure takes a lot of the strain on that, certainly from an IT operations perspective. Ideally, my team don't have to react fast because the technology does. So we have those levels of resilience within the systems. We have you know, those layers of technology that allow us to make a slower, more considered decision but in those cases where you know we might need to react fast, mm. there's no shortcut to experience, and, and the, you know that's where we look to the more senior people within the within mm. the team to be able to make those calls. Well, I, I think that that is a really good um, input, uh, especially I think nowadays that there, there has been a lot of discussion about wow, AI and Gen AI can do everything. Uh, what would be the role of you know, people like you and me, right, as in how important the people element in the success of the whole operation. Just on that, though, very quickly, I, you know, I, I do have a, have a couple of thoughts where prior to AI, you used to have that sort of data, information, knowledge, wisdom line. And I think where you've got AI these days, AI is now moving into the knowledge space. So it can present knowledge to you. Mm. Wisdom is where the human stays in the loop. This is a great point because, I mean, uh, we as a company, we, we spend a lot of time work with our customer to see how can we apply technology, of course, that include AI. Um, I mean, most of the discussions is not about the technology itself only. It's about the, the, the process, mm. the people, the change management that you need to have, right? Because it's completely new system, maybe even new way of running the operation and doing business. Now, coming back to F1, as I mentioned, I think uh, this is all about speed, right? On the course and at the back. Um, well, do, do you have a moment where a data-driven real-time decision really changed uh, significantly the outcome and what are the kind of insight and learning that you have from that? Not, not really. The, the drivers and the teams are where those decisions lie. What we do from our side of things is support some of those decisions. Mm. So the, the, the stars of the show are always going to be the drivers and the teams. Mm. But from our perspective, if we use an example like uh, Jumpstart, so we have sensors in the track, uh, on the grid. If the car <laughs> moves off, you know, before the lights go out, we have that information, we then share that 
with the FIA who would make a judgment call mm -hmm. as to whether that was a jump yeah. start of the event. So we bring that information together and we allow somebody else like the FIA in that instance to make a decision around you know, whether there has been an infraction in that space. But what I would say on the, on the production side, on the media production side, you know, if there is a change in strategy, if it suddenly starts raining and they all start piling in for wet tires, you'll see, you know, the directors changing. They'll get the guys with the RF cameras running down into the relevant team garages or if somebody's damaged the front wing, there will be times when the director will then change tax as mm. to what we're showing um, and what we're conveying out to the fan based on track activity. Amazing. Now, here comes a, a, a tough question for you. Right? You have been with the operation for 20, 26 years mm -hmm. or even more. Give me one memorable moment which was off the camera. Yes, there's, there's a few. And this is around the operational side of things. And this was a build up. So, you know, when we went into to COVID and lockdown, that was where remote operations came into play. And we had about eight weeks and we had to reconfigure all of our systems. 70% of that production facility mm. stayed in the UK mm. and 30% of it went out to the circuit. You know, so we were under lockdown conditions in the UK, having to reconfigure everything to enable something that was really far up the risk curve from, you know, technology. It's never been done before anywhere. We were taking a bit of a gamble, but I would say that was a big memorable moment as we got to that first race and that worked. There's another one is when we built a data center in eight weeks. We changed the whole of the server infrastructure. So uh, I remember I was on a, a call date two days before Christmas with uh, Alfredo um, saying, Alfredo, we need a new Lenovo setup. Um, we got it in, we got it delivered. We had some Lenovo engineers come and join us. We had it built. Um, we turned everything, virtualized our environment uh, in a matter of a couple of weeks and we spun it up and we ran with the first race in, in 23 with a whole new virtualized environment, whole new platform, whole new network um, in terms of, you know, big technology shift, massive for us um, and definitely the right move and it was a big feather in the cap for all of my team. Thanks for the opportunity because, I mean, we were given the opportunity to be part of the, your memorable moment. Well, probably the last question. Once upon a time, I was thinking about to, uh, you know, study mechanical engineering because I want to be closer to automobile. Now, um, for anyone, especially who are someone who are planning their career or even their academic study, what kind of advice would you give to them if they would like to work up their path to F1 or closer to F1? That's a good question. F1 isn't just about the, the technology in itself or, or being with the teams. There's a whole load of different industries around it and whether that's media, production, post-production, you know, we even have commercial sponsorship people uh, working for us. Uh, so there's, there's a whole range of skills that we need within Formula One and Formula One industry. So for me, find your true passion and perseverance. So if your passion is in media production, there's plenty of roles within and around Formula One for that, but perseverance to keep going, keep driving, I, I would say will definitely get you where you want to go to. Looking forward to a successful event in Hungary Grand Prix uh, this weekend. Very so welcome. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lenovo, Lenovo.